Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a Dunkin' Donuts for all of your city building needs. Thank you to all of you that suggested that I make a Dunkin' Donuts. Hopefully some of you guys will actually be able to see yourselves on the screen right now. Thank you very much for suggesting that I make this, ladies and gentlemen, because it helps keep this series going. And I want to know what you guys want to see. So please do leave a suggestion down below if you want to see something specific. Not only that, if you want to keep up to date with all of these city builds, you know what to do. Subscribe and click the little bell next to the subscription button and that'll ensure that you get all my stuff sent directly to your sub box so you don't miss any one of these city builds. If you're building the city, it's the place to be. But without any further ado, let's get started ladies and gentlemen. Let's get Start! So, just before we begin building, ladies and gentlemen, here are all of the materials that we are going to be using for the outside of our Dunkin' Donuts. Please do make sure that you have access to all of those, and enough of them as well. But, I do also want to let you know that later on we are going to be delving inside of Dunkin' Donuts, which will require a whole different set of materials, which I will be showing you as we get to that point. So don't worry about that now, but it is going to be coming up later. The amount of space required to make Dunkin' Donuts is a 27 by 26 block area on the ground. I would always highly recommend making this grid in your world if you are planning out a city. It is invaluable if you're making stuff next to Dunkin' Donuts, but that is up to you. And that's it. Pause the video if you have to, gather all those materials, make sure that you've got enough room to make it, make sure that you're ready for some delicious coffee and donuts, and once you are, we can begin. Alright, step one donut friends, come all the way to the front left hand corner of the grid. If you've not made the grid, it really isn't a big deal as we will be finding the starting position very soon. From this corner, I want you to count to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then inwards, one, two, three, four, five, five, six. You see, that way, we're both building in the same position inside the same grid if you've built it to. On top of this block, I want you to place 11 spruce wood planks on the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Go right by five. One, two, three, four, five. And then connect back down to the ground. This might take a moment or two. Perfect. Once you have created this shape right here, we are going to behind the block that hit the ground, which is of course this one. I want you to behind this place a row of five spruce planks coming up behind it. One, two, three, four, five. Coming out of the fifth spruce plank, place, place, four orange concrete. One, two, three, four. Connect those last two blocks down to the ground. And also, add another row of orange just underneath the first two blocks to give you a nice shape like this. You can even as so far fill it in using black glass pane or black glass block. Like that. We are now going to just flip over to the right here. We are going to add another row of orange concrete coming backwards from this row to double it up like this. So we now have the same thing on both sides, the front and the right side. And then we're going to take these top two blocks here and extend both of them backwards by six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and the same just up above. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just like that. I want you to add spruce wood planks on the end of the two rows of six. Extend the spruce planks down to the ground. Take the block that hit the ground and extend it one row towards you. Place ten on top. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Go right by 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And connect that back down to the ground. So, eventually you will end up with this shape. Now, once you have achieved this shape, 
I want you to take the block that hit the ground, place two blocks coming inwards towards the middle of the grid, one, two, place yourself a birchwood plank, it's actually more than one, you want to place four birchwood planks coming outwards from this spruce, one, two, three, four, that will come towards the back of the grid. We're then going to place ourselves seven birchwood planks on top of the fourth block one two three four five six seven we're then going to extend it across the back of our grid by twelve one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve you can even go as far as connecting this down to the ground if you'd like however you are also going to want to take that 12th block right there and you want to extend it forwards by 17. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Connect that block down to the ground as well. And then join this 17th block just diagonally to the front entrance area like this. Whilst we have our birch planks out, we also want to place a layer of birch planks in the front right hand corner of Dunkin Donuts. This birch plank shape is going to just sit inside the curvature of the orange concrete that we placed so if you can imagine it's just one block upwards and one block inwards and it just kind of looks like a J well on top of this J we want to place two additional rows of birch wood one two and that's pretty much all there is to it place two rows of birch wood like this what we are now going to do is just add a little bit more detail to the walls of Dunkin Donuts and then we can start adding in a lot of colour. So on the left side of Dunkin Donuts, which is of course here, I probably don't have to tell you that, I want you to grab your orange concrete and I want you to place orange concrete coming outwards diagonally from the front left hand corner of Dunkin Donuts. We're going to place a row of four coming up from the ground. One, two, three, four. We're then going to go left by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then join down. We are going to leave a gap of four in the ground coming back. One, two, three, four. On top of this fifth block, we're going to place another row of four coming up. One, two, three, four. And then left by three. One, two, three just like that and we're just going to join that all the way down to the ground like this so on the side of Dunkin Donuts we will have something which should look exactly like that which is perfect what we're now going to do is fill in in between all of these orange rows we're going to fill in the rest of the side using birch planks so in between these orange blocks just add yourself some birch planks. As a matter of fact, behind the orange concretes, I also want you to add virtual planks too. So here, just behind the orange, and also here as well. This is actually a little drive through window just right here, like that. Now, we're going to fill the large window in using black stained glass pane. This is towards the front. Just three rows of black stained glass pane or glass block on top of each other will do. This is an order window, like I said. So, I mean, pretty much all we're going to be doing here. We're just going to use two upside down quartz stairs in this manner. And then you can either add a little bit of black glass up the right side or maybe even along the top or however you want to do it just to show that the window could be potentially closed. Coming towards the back of the build, we're going to fill the entire back in with birchwood planks because there's windows on every single other side of the build. And along this back wall, we've got a lot of um, coffee and pretty much kind of like donut making apparatus. Mostly coffee, actually. So we don't really want loads and loads of windows on the back. 
When it comes to this side, what you can do is raise up the birch wood planks up as high as the other birch wood planks. So the birch wood planks that we placed on the back, you can raise it up as high. Equally so, you just want to fill the gap in here using spruce wood planks. So we're just going to use spruce wood planks in this way here, just to uh, cover in any gaps that we might have. And this also applies like where we just, where it would need to connect to the wall, we're going to make the wall nice and smooth. So we don't want to have any weird gaps or anything like that. The same thing can be applied to here where the front is, like just, you want to raise up the spruce wood planks just so that there's not going to be any sort of weird gap. So like here for instance, I might actually leave that gap there because uh, I quite like having a smooth wall. We might alter that when it comes, nah, you know what, never mind, let's, let's, just, add a, let's just add the road there. We can always undo it later, should we need to. And I think I'll also have it here on the right too, yeah, because... Uh, or not. We'll see. We'll see. We might undo that later. But what is important is that we are going to use some black stained glass pane to just fill this little part in here too. So this is the large window running up the right side. As I said, many windows around. So, you know, so far we've almost done this. We just need to fill in this panel here where we have the birch wood. We're just going to completely fill this in with birch wood, as you can see, just like that. So all in all, the only parts that we kind of really have to fill in so far, so to speak, we have to fill in the spruce wood parts, but I also want to fill in the roof. But I also want to extend the spruce wood parts another row backwards. So the spruce wood parts that extend and hang over the roof, you might say, I just want to add another row. So I want them to be about four rows thick. So here, just the part that will overhang, I'm going to extend the spruce backwards and I'm going to fill the back of it in, just like this. So you can see it's four rows thick. The same thing shall go for this one here. I just want to extend this part that will overhang and extend into the roof one row backwards and then fill the top of it in just like this. Perfect. Additionally, I'm going to fill the rest of the roof in using, um, I'm just going to use the birch wood just at the top here because it's quite, um, a, a kind of like an abnormal shape up here. Like it's a bit weird, it's twisty and turny. It, it's very possible that you could if you wanted to just like make it any colour or whatever if you wanted. But I'm kind of going for a more modern style in which we just completely fill the top of this in and then it is what it is almost. So let's just fill all this in with birch. We're going to work around the fact that we've got spruce wood. You don't really have to worry about the fact that you're going to have like a weird shape inside of the roof, like at the, like actually inside the building. You don't have to worry about it because we're going to be adding an interior roof anyway. So the end result of that should actually look quite a bit like this. Well, what else are we going to do from here? So the next job that we are going to do is we are going to focus on the two entrances. We have two of them, one at the front and just one on the side there. So let's do it to it. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to focus on the actual entrance itself. So we'll start on the front. The entrance way is set one row inwards. So where we have this row of three is the middle row. Starting from the left, place a row of one, two, three, four black concretes coming up and then go right by one, two, join down and then take the top and extend right. So you have quite an abnormal shape. The right side, we're going to fill in using glass pane. We're going to add a black glass block at the top in the middle. We're going to add spruce wood slabs coming along the top of the entrance. We're going to dump out our birch wood planks. And I'm quickly devising what else. We actually need quite a few materials, but I'll, I'll tell you what, we'll just grab the brown concrete here. And I want you to place underneath the top two middle blocks here, up at the top of the build, place brown concrete underneath the top two middle blocks. I want you to place two orange concrete coming down from the left side and two magenta coming down from the right. Everything above this is going to be filled in, or around this I should say, is going to be filled in using spruce wood planks like this. 
The idea of this is the fact that we're going to make a coffee cup in front of it with two upside down quartz stairs just in these two positions but we don't really have enough materials on us and we'll place some quartz slabs along the top of this just like that and I might have actually have placed the <laughs> I might have actually have placed uh, a little bit too much color uh, it, it works out that you want to have quartz slabs in front of the birch wood or in front of the brown concrete and then you want to have upside down quartz stairs underneath like this and you only want to have one row of color so I actually goofed there a little bit so that's what you're actually looking for and then beyond that you want to place a cobweb on this left side here up above the mug or cup and then another one just flowing upwards and that's meant to simulate like the steam coming off of the drink so that's like hot coffee you whoops you might not like that but i i actually think it makes it a little bit more interesting and there's also it contains all of the colors and stuff in the logo so i'll leave that up to you as to whether or not you want to design the entrance like that but that's not the only entrance that we've got to make like this anyway. Now that you've completed one, we've got to come all the way over to this side and do the same. So that involves us grabbing black concrete, coming to the left side of the middle row of spruce wood. We place four black concrete, one, two, three, four coming up, come across to the right by two, join down to the ground, take the top right corner and extend it to the right by one, you fill the right side in using black stained glass pane. You add a glass block above the entrance on the left. You place spruce wood slabs coming across the top of the entrance. You come all the way up to the top of the build and you grab a material that you don't have, or at least I don't, which is brown concrete. You place it underneath these top two middle spruce woods. We're going to place orange underneath the left side and magenta underneath the right upside down quartz stairs back to back we then actually don't need quartz stairs for a little bit so we're actually going to dump those and the brown concrete and we need quartz slabs and cobwebs and i'm going to place quartz slabs on top of the stairs with cobwebs upon the left side and then a diagonal one coming up right like that and then all you have to do is just fill in around this using a bit of spruce wood planks like this. Very sorry that I got it wrong on the first side. I mean, I, uh, I miscalculated slightly. I thought the cup was actually a bit longer. You could make it longer, by the way, if you wanted to. And there you have a nice cup. And uh, I'm just going to experiment. I mean, does the cup look a little bit better if it's a bit bigger? I don't know. Or does it look goofy? It might look a bit goofy. So it's very possible that this won't look right. Mm, I guess that's kind of personal preference. I kind of like the small one. And it also actually leaves us enough room to actually have the banners down below. So it doesn't work anyway, unless you were to extend uh, the uh, entrance a little bit, like if you were to extend it upwards. So little tiny cups we have. And I actually think that that looks pretty decent. I hope that you guys do too. So now that we've done that, ladies and gentlemen, now that we have most of the structure of Dunkin' Donuts complete, we're going to do my least favorite part of this tutorial nice and early so that we can work on much more fun things. So we have to write out Dunkin' Donuts in banners. This requires a crafting table, first of all, and we can just use one of these and we can plonk it down. I'm going to chuck it right here where we started just because I'm going to destroy the crafting table because we only need one. And I'm going to make it so that white banners, magenta dye, and orange dye, I don't know how I didn't move the banners, are all in the upper left corner of the inventory. Now this is important, so now when we crack open the crafting table, and we have our crafting area, all of these things are quite close. The first thing we have to make is an orange D. And just to let you know, all of these banners, every single one, we're going to be using twice. So if you're not in creative mode, you have to make these twice. Feel free to make them all once and then refollow this part of the tutorial if you have to. But we have to use them twice. So crack open the crafting table. 
and we start off with the yellow D. And I realize we actually are missing white dye. That's quite important. So I'm just going to grab some. It will be in the material list, but it kind of just uh, slipped my mind a little bit for this part of the tutorial. So the orange D, we're going to start off with a white banner in the middle of the crafting table. An orange dye coming up the right side, top to bottom. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle right of the table with white dye in the center of the banner. Grab the new banner and place it in the center of the table with orange dye underneath. Grab the new banner and place it in the center of the table with orange dye coming up the left side. Grab the new banner and place it in the center of the table with orange dye coming along the top. That is the final banner that is D. U is made by placing a white banner in the middle of the table with orange dye coming up the left side top to bottom. Grab the new banner and place it in the center of the table and place orange dye top to bottom up the right side. Grab the new banner and place it in the center of the table with orange dye along the bottom. Grab the new banner and that is U. We now have to make N. White banner in the center of the table with orange dye coming up the left side. Grab the new banner and place it in the center of the table with orange dye coming up the right side. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle left of the table with orange dye top left corner to bottom right corner. That is N. Now we have to make K, which is a white banner in the middle of the table and orange dye coming up the left side. Grab the new banner and place it in the center of the table with orange dye bottom left hand corner to top right. Grab the new banner and place it in the center of the table with orange dye top left corner to bottom right. That is K. We now have to grab a new banner and we can place it in the middle left of the table with orange dye coming up the middle. And that is I. I, speaking of I, have just figured out we can actually use N twice. So, you might have to make a second N if you're not in creative, but I'm sure that you'll be able to do it quite easily. So, the first part of the logo, the first part of Duncan, is set directly underneath the coffee cup on the left side. D, U, N, K, I, N. Duncan. We then want to come along the opposite side here, and we want to do the same. D, U, N, K, I, Dunky. Oh, and then another N. <laughs> oh, quick, we almost forgot that. Duncan on both sides. Now, I would recommend this. If you have made your banners and you're in creative, I would store them in a chest until you're sure you don't need them anymore. It's easy to destroy these. Trust me, I know. So now that we've done Dunkin', we're halfway there, we just have to write donuts. So crack open your crafting table once more and place a white banner in the center of the table. Magenta die coming up the right side. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle right of the table with a single white die in the middle. Grab the new banner and place it in the center of the table. Magenta die along the bottom. Grab the new banner, place it in the middle of the table with magenta die coming up the left side. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table with magenta die coming along the top. That is D. Next is O, which is a white banner in the middle of the table, magenta die along the bottom. Grab the new banner and place it in the center of the table with magenta dye coming up the left side. Grab the new banner and place it in the center of the table with magenta dye coming along the top. Grab the new banner and place it in the center of the table with magenta dye coming along the right side. Grab the new banner, that is O. Now we have to make N. We've made this before, but it's a white banner in the middle of the table, 
magenta die coming up the left side, grab the new banner and place it in the centre of the table with magenta die coming up the right side, grab the new banner, place it in the middle left of the table, magenta die top left corner to bottom right corner. Grab the new banner and that is N. U is another one we've made before but that's a white banner in the middle of the table, magenta die up the left side, grab the new banner, middle of the table again, magenta die up the right side, grab the new banner, banner in the middle of the table again, and place magenta die along the bottom, and that is you. T is quite easy as well, that is basically a white banner in the middle of the table, magenta die coming up the middle, grab the new banner, place it in the middle of the table, magenta die coming along the top, and that is T. Finally, we have S, which is quite easy as well. That's a white banner in the middle of the table. Magenta die along the top. Grab the new banner. Place it in the middle of the table again. Magenta die along the bottom. Grab the new banner. Place it in the middle of the table. And place magenta die top left corner to bottom right corner. And there you have S. I do want to state again, you will need to make all of these twice if you're in survival, so that's something that you might have to account for. These letters go directly underneath the orange letters, so D-O-N-U-T-S, just like that, Dunkin' Donuts. Same thing on the opposite side here, D-O-N-U-T-S, Dunkin' Donuts, and that's all there is to it. It just adds a little bit of colour and it also adds the fact, like, if you don't know what this building is, I hopefully you can read if you can you know well done it took me a while too then you'll be able to write dunkin donuts on your building people know what it is i am going to chuck these in this chest just in case there's some horrible thing that happens and i am now going to work on the outside of dunkin donuts just a little bit so all of these, by the way, all these next changes are completely optional. You do not have to add these because it depends where you're building this. If you're building this in a city, leave it as it is just like this. But I kind of want to add some car park spaces and I want to add a drive through and a little bit of like a walkway and stuff. So feel free to add these if you want, but if not, just skip forward. The things that we're going to need for this next part include oak wood planks, grey concrete. We need a lot of smooth stone yellow concrete, we're going to use a bit of quartz slab, some cobblestone slab, oak leaves, flowers, and that's all we'll use at the moment. So first of all, I'm going to create an oak wood plank wall along the entire left side of the grid. So just like this. And I'm also going to make it two rows high. Oak plank wall along the entire left side of the grid like this. For those of you that haven't made the grid, this wall is three blocks away from the left side of Dunkin' Donuts and it is directly one, two, three, four, five, six rows in front of the entrance and it's just one row behind the back. So feel free to add that in even if you haven't made the grid. We're going to add an oak wood plank wall directly behind Dunkin' Donuts. It's going to start from the back left corner of Dunkin' Donuts and it's going to come out and it's going to cover up to the back right corner of the grid. So for those of you that haven't made the grid, it comes out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows outside the right side of Dunkin' Donuts and it's going to be two rows high, just like the drive through Speaking of which, I'm going to dig out all of the grass of this drive through area here and I'm going to dig coming out equal in length with the wall and equal in width to where we have those windows. Might even want to make the drive through a little bit um, wider, but this, I've kind of just chose to leave it three blocks because I don't, I don't really want to make cars and stuff that's going through the drive through anyway, so it doesn't have to have a massive amount of space, just enough space really. I'm going to dig all this out and I'm using specifically grey concrete myself for a road material. So whatever you want to use as a road material, you can use that. So a light concrete, a light grey concrete rather, black concrete, cyan terracotta, stone, you know, the list goes on really, it really does. So just a nice road out in front of Dunkin' Donuts. 
Equally so, I want to have a path outside Dunkin' Donuts too. Uh, this path is going to be about two rows out in front of it, literally. So where the entrance is, one, two, just like that, right? And this path is going to connect us to the road, just like this. And it's also going to, uh, it's just going to come out the right side of Dunkin' Donuts. So outside the, from beyond this o orange concrete here, it's going to come out one, two, three. So you're going to have two rows clearance is what that works out to be from the front and the right side of your Dunkin' Donuts, pretty much. Uh, so that means that you'll have two rows to walk around where you're not going to be interrupted by anything. So that's why we came out free from the orange, but it actually only works out to be two rows outside of the actual entrance on the right side of Dunkin' Donuts. And that's just so that pe people can basically walk around Dunkin' Donuts without being run over, pretty much. Unless somebody's forgotten their glasses and they're kind of mounting the uh, the Corsi, also known as the, the sidewalk there. So, like that. So, what else do we want to do? Well, I want to extend this path here on the right. I want to extend it forwards by one, two, three, four rows. And I'm just going to have a path that's about three rows thick. It makes sense because it's the amount of space that is extended to the right from the orange concrete. It looks a bit weird with just two. So, something like that, right? I also want to just make this area in front here. I don't think I'm going to be destroying these banners, so I can quite happily just wreck that. Uh, I'm going to use some cobblestone slab in front of the stone, uh, in front of the stone walkway, and I'm going to extend the cobblestone slab forwards on the left and right by one. I'm going to add in a diagonal block coming forwards from both sides, and then I'm going to join it together in the middle like this. Right? I'm going to add poppies. Use your favourite flower on the left and right sides coming inwards diagonally like this. And I'm just going to have oak leaves in front, just as a little bit of nature, just to make it a bit interesting, break it up from the rest of the builds. Just a nice little bit of display of nature there. Uh, what else do we want? Well, I want a car park area uh, along this right side. So first, I'm just going to destroy all of this grass and stuff. All this grass can go. Um, it's, we're not really in an area, unless you wanted to, by the way. You could turn this all into a hedge area. These builds are, are so moldable. You can do what you want with them. You really can. But I, this is what I'm doing for me, so, you know, you do you. But uh, all this can go. And I'm just going to place a bit of grey concrete here instead. So all of this can just can all go, just like this. Going to grey concrete it up. And I'm also going to divide it into segments as well. I'm going to divide it into car parking spaces. So that looks all right. But I want to use yellow concrete. And I'm going to start from the end here. And I'm going to mark out a series of spaces. And this is how I'm going to do it. From the end, I'm going to destroy, place a yellow. Leave a gap of one, two, three, four, yellow. 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 And then that's actually all right. That's fine. I'm going to make the yellow concretes. I'm going to make them about as long as the gray that we have here. Um, these could easily be extended and made longer depending on what kind of vehicles you want to put here. If at all, if you want to put vehicles here at all, uh, just like this. And then you might even choose to do this, place a little bit of quartz slabs at the end in between just to kind of add another color to the area and kind of add a little bit of stoppages in between um, the car parking spaces like that. And what I did on the original of this, I also curved um, this part here. And what I mean by that is I kind of knocked out these corner blocks like this for some reason and made it a bit of a curve. Uh, if I had grass blocks on me, I'd place some in here. I'd also do the same here too, like I'd delete these and I'd place some grass. But that that kind of like concludes to what I would do to the outside of Dunkin' Donuts. It's, it's quite moldable, so you can do all of that or none of it. It's completely up to you. I think it looks quite good like that. The next thing that we're going to do, by the way, to save us having to grab materials later on and all of that, to just save us a little bit on, like, uh, space wastage, we are going to move on to the inside. I I have Unkin Donuts. <laughs> I have Unkin Donuts in my <laughs> in my inventory, don't I? Let's, uh, let's get rid of Unkin Donuts, shall we? So here and here, right? So... It, 
what we're going to now do is we're going to do some preparation for the inside. And all this needs, we need some orange concrete, we need magenta concrete, we need a flooring material, that's spruce with planks. I'm going to use some quartz stairs for the next for this next part too. What else might I need? Um, I might also need... I don't know, you know, oh, we need light, so that's redstone lamps, block of redstone, and we're going to use some quartz slabs as well. Let's do this. So, grab all of those and head inside. So, the first thing that I'm going to do inside is I'm going to re-floor the area. I want my floor to be spruce wood. I want it to be spruce wood planks. Uh, just because it's quite consistent with the rest of the restaurant, like, uh, if you can call this a restaurant... Uh, probably not. Uh, kind of, though. It's kind of like a sort of like a fast food restaurant. Classify it how you will. It's a restaurant in my heart. Well, it's bright and colorful in here, so that's why I'm kind of offsetting it with some spruce wood. Feel free to use birch instead. Feel free to use stone instead. Feel free to use uh, quartz instead. Any color you could use. You can do what you want with it, but these are, these are some suggestions. I'm making the floor spruce wood because... We're going to be using a lot of bright colours, and it's it's not going to hurt your eyes as much if there's a contrast colour against those bright colours. Kind of like with outside, like we're using bright orange, we're using magentas, we're using in some cases birch, which is quite a bright wood. It's quite good to have light and dark. You'll find that with a lot of things. Well, once we have done this, we are also going to be focusing on the ceiling as well, but... Uh, a lot of what I want to do in here, not only do I want a floor installed, as I'm doing here, and by the way, just behind this, I might just add, like, another set of quartz stairs here. Um, maybe place those underneath, too, just just so that it's, like, level with the wall. Um, yeah, we're, we're installing a floor, we're installing a ceiling, and we're also going to be installing... Kind of just like countertops and we're going to be installing maybe a little bit of like places where we're going to be putting seating. I figure we might as well use the materials that we have on us right now, it just makes sense. The ceiling for Dunkin Donuts, you might be wondering to yourselves, high, how high is the ceiling? It's about four rows high actually. Um, it sits just up above where we have the black concrete of it it just sits one block one row up above where we have the black concrete of the entrance and i'm going to be using quartz slab for this uh, you can equally use quartz block I, I just don't happen to have any on me at the moment quartz slab is a little bit more irritating to work with for a lack of a better term but it's what we have on us so why not so, the quartz slab is just going to sit one row, or just above the entrance pretty much, uh, like half a row above the drive-through window, you know, it's, that's pretty much it. I'm thinking maybe above the drive-through window, we could even use a little bit of colour to kind of point out the window. Like in the wall, maybe we can even use a little bit of uh, magenta, because there's there's not loads and loads of magenta around, there kind of is actually, that's a lie. So just above the drive-through window, I think I'm just going to delete these and place a bit of magenta in there, just to make it stick out a little bit. So, when it comes to the lighting, I want to use an old fan of favourite, which is redstone lamps and block of redstone. So, I only, need, I, I think I only need about four or so lamps in the ceiling, you don't need that many. So, I'm going to count diagonally inwards from the corners of the ceiling. I'm, I'm going to probably count in about like one, two, three, four. I'm going to destroy. And then this corner, one, two, three, four, destroy. I'm going to do the same at the back. One, two, three, four, destroy. One, two, three, four, destroy. Is there a way to place another one in? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No. Uh, not unless we had like here. Oh. Hang on. What happened here? So like it'd have to be here and here. Make it line up with the front. Yeah, there we go. So you'd have to have them spaced two blocks apart um, for it to work if you wanted to have like an equal number the way that we've done it. And uh, we're just going to light them up using uh, some redstone, like this. Here, and here, 
want to slip back down in just like this and uh, yep there we go so I'm just installing the lights like this and I guess we've got like a row of eight lights that will keep everywhere very nice and bright and they are set out in kind of nice positions like where the entrance is and right kind of like in the middle of Dunkin Donuts and there is an equal amount of them so it's quite nice and bright like this the next things that we want to do include like adding counter spaces and stuff so, first of all, a couple of random things. In the front left corner of Dunkin' Donuts, right here, I'm going to add a magenta concrete with a quartz stairs in front. I'm going to leave a gap of two and place another quartz stairs. I'm going to leave a gap of one and coming out from here, I'm going to place an orange concrete, gap of one, two orange concrete, I'm going to move towards the right by five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to come across here. Actually, you know what? We might make that six. So we're going to make that six. And then we're going to connect here. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's going to connect to that wall quite perfectly, right? Just like that. Coming along this entire back wall, I want to have orange concrete like this. What I also want to do is I want to place an orange concrete just here next to the drive through window. I want to have magenta concrete coming up above here like where we have these oranges starting from the right side. I want to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight magenta concretes coming along the top like this. I want to use a couple of stairs as cash registers. So, just starting from maybe the left side of the counter, I'm going to leave a gap of one quartz stair, maybe like a gap of three or so, and then, or maybe like just like here, maybe like a quartz stair like that. Or I might even leave a gap of one because we're going to be placing glass along here as well. By the way, grab the glass pane and just place like an entire row of glass just along here, just like that. And what else are we going to do as well? So from here, we also want to create a couple of seats too. So uh, in this, this corner here, the front corner of the restaurant, we're going to place another magenta concrete and we're gonna place a quartz stairs coming out to the right. There's just gonna be a seat here. Leaving a gap of one in front of this magenta concrete, we're going to place a stair in that position. We're going to leave a gap of two between this stair here and we're going to place another stair in a back-to-back -back position like that. So there's actually going to be a nice little private table here. Where the private table would be, which is here, I want you to leave a gap of two in the ground and then place magenta concrete right to that way by four. One, two, three, four. We're going to place a quartz stair coming inwards from the end gap of one, two quartz stairs, one in the corner. So it's just like quite a nice little lounging area, quite a few tables around the place. We actually have, I come to realize, some oak leaves. So we can place these oak leaves on the magenta concrete that we placed in the two corners here because those are just going to be part of plants anyway. Now that we have done most of this, ladies and gentlemen, there is just one thing I realize. It's kind of figuring out what materials you have on you. I want you to place quartz stairs in this position, evenly in between this orange concrete and this orange concrete, coming along the top of the wall, place two quartz stairs here in between the two orange concretes like this. I kind of also want to, whilst I'm here, I, I might re-floor the area behind the counter and I might turn it quartz slabs. Uh, if you want to whip out quartz blocks quickly, then feel free to, but I think quartz slabs will actually do the job just fine, like this. So here, and here as well, just to make the area look a little bit different again quartz quartz blocks would have been easier but uh yeah we don't have them so we we really didn't have too much room in our inventory i didn't really i, I didn't want to like stock up on quartz blocks when quartz slabs do the job too 
So, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, we've done a huge amount of the inside as well. Now that now that we've kind of like done all of that, um, what I am now going to do, however, is I'm just going to put two dark oak wood doors on the entrances. So this entrance here and this entrance here. So we've done a huge amount of Dunkin' Donuts already, ladies and gentlemen. We are missing some inside materials now though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away. I'm going to get rid of all of these, absolutely every single one of these, right? I don't think we need any more of them. And I'm going to grab all of these materials that you can now see on the screen in front of you. So we literally didn't even have room for these earlier. Please make sure that you have access to all of those materials or similar materials. Make sure you've got them all. And once you're ready, once you do have all of them, we can move on to the inside. Let me do that for myself, ladies and gentlemen. Please, I need to do it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have just finished grabbing all of those materials that I showed you on the screen for myself. Once you have all of them yourself as well, we can begin. But of course, pause the video if you have to, if you do need time to gather all of those materials. You have been warned. So, let's go to the inside of Dunkin' Donuts. And obviously, you'll notice that we've already done quite a bit of work in here, right? We've done quite a bit of work, but there's always more that we can do. So, first of all, Underneath where we placed these two quartz stairs, we're going to place furnaces on the ground. We're going to place daylight sensors on top, and those are just used for, like, cooking stuff. Next to these, left and right, we're going to place some more furnaces, and we're going to place some weighted pressure plates on top of them. So, it's just a different type of cooking apparatus. Along this back wall here, I'm going to place a series of one, two, three cakes, just like this. And just up above here, I'm going to have, like, item frames. And I kind of want to have signs. So what these signs would say is, like, how much each item would cost. So, like, whether we're going to have, like, a, a cake in one, we're going to have bread in one, and another one in one as well. But we just don't have those at the moment. Along the top here, where we have these magentas, starting from the left, we're going to follow this. We're going to place a birch sign, and we're going to have, like, item frame. Birch sign item frame but sign item frame oh, no come back uh another birch sign and an item frame and in these i'm gonna have cocoa beans because that looks like coffee and you know coffee beans cocoa beans very similar inside of this you'd have like i don't know like um latte black coffee uh you know a mocha coffee you know all, all sorts of different drinks and just along the bottom down here, we're just going to have, like, flower pots, which are cups. And we're going to have brewing stands underneath. So that is actually to make the coffee uh, out of Dunkin' Donuts. So we sell treats, we sell coffee, we can cook it over here, um, just inside here as well. And by the way, feel free to chuck a couple of, like, flower pots about as well. So some of these can be mugs if you want. So you can put flowers in some of them as well. Maybe even, like, here too, right? And when it comes to these item frames, like, uh, I actually do have these materials on me too. Like, uh, you, you know, you, you might be able, be able to sell some, maybe like a sandwich or something maybe, or maybe even some cookie or, you know, something like that just to kind of like have in here too. Um, what else might you want around the area? Well, there's, there's a few things. So a little bit of carpet's quite nice, some orange carpet and some magenta. Just kind of like in this area here, just maybe like a strip of free, right? Alternating magenta and orange carpet just kind of sort of taking you to the door the carpet is kind of just it, it doesn't go up to anywhere it's just set in the middle almost like a rug is and it just adds some color to the uh, area here similar thing here as well i'm gonna add one here so i just kind of want to maintain about a distance of one from everywhere and i just want a little rug made out of orange carpet and magenta just in this area we don't really have to have it anywhere else well, what else can we have? Well, we need tables, so I'm going to grab a block of redstone, um, piston, and some weighted pressure plates. And everywhere that we have quartz stairs, we're going to dig in front, and we're going to place a block of redstone and a piston. And these are just going to make tables. I love these kinds of tables. I use them all the time. Um, it's, it just looks like a, a nice table. Uh, on top of the table, you can feel free to place some weighted pressure plates, some magenta carpet, maybe, maybe even some orange, just anywhere that you like. Um, we've got a couple of single tables here too, so we can do a similar sort of deal, piston, piston. Um, maybe a couple of weighted pressure plates over here on this one. No, there's one there too, so how about magenta? Uh, when we, we have a single table here too, just, uh, just one here, 
here. Um, we'll use a white one. And just, we want one in the middle of all of these two. So, here, here. Uh, what color haven't we used in a while? Probably orange. It works quite well there too. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we, we've got a pretty nice, lively inside of the building, really. Um, you can. There's a couple of spaces where you might want to place, like, a painting. So... Let's say we want like a painting here, just on this wall, and we don't want it to be too big, so we could have a painting there, we could have a painting there, let's say. You've even got enough room to, for a double painting there, maybe maybe I want one over here too. Quite often find, no, not that one. Yeah, that one's fine, that's perfect. So it's, it, you know, it's just quite a nice place to put a load of paintings and stuff just uh, all over the place. You could even put like more item frames above here if you wanted to, or you could add kind of like, you could refine the extractor fan area. We're getting kind of like finicky with things. You, you're more than welcome to like change this up. Like you could extend this across if you wanted to. You could, um, I don't know. I, you could add more little weird details to this. Like you could add some bars underneath, something like that. It doesn't really make too much sense to be honest, but it just kind of looks like something. Uh, if you wanted to, you could add lanterns hanging, but I'd, I'm actually quite happy with the interior like this. It's quite nice. It's quite functional. It's quite simple. Um, the only thing that you might want to perhaps add is just behind this counter here. You might want to add... Um, you'd use a neutral block, kind of maybe like white concrete. And this is up to you. Um, maybe you want to have some cups uh, you can use a couple of different things for cups as well. They've changed everything around. I find it quite hard to find stuff, to be honest. I'm looking for flower parts and sea pickles. And I'm also looking for cakes as well, which should be... Where are... <laughs> ah, there they are. So, behind this counter here, it might be quite cool to have, like, you know, maybe, like, a, a, a cup or so. Sea, sea pickles kind of look like... Uh, uh, cups so kind of like little confectionaries that people can like buy behind the counter all of the all of the it depends how far you want to go with these things like you can decorate it even more you can add less you can write in all of the signs and stuff you guys get the idea take this as far as you want it some of the materials that i've just used there won't be in the item list because again it's up to you whether or not you want to do it but ladies and gentlemen we've we've kind of sort of done the whole build and as is tradition, now that we've completed the inside, I'm going to give you guys a nice tour around the outside. I'm going to come inside and we're just going to make sure that everything is the way that we want it. So let's take a look at this thing. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is what your Dunkin' Donuts should look like once it's been 100% fully completed. I have cleaned up the outside for you, but hopefully you should also have a drive through You should have a nice presentable entrance way with a path and some greenery. We should have a drive through window we have a fence that comes along the back wall and along the right side we have another entrance another nice big window too plenty of branding loads of car parking spaces and pretty much a nice colorful welcoming exterior as we come inside of the build, we have a huge seating area, loads of seating areas, loads of little tables, even a big one as well, whether you want to drink with somebody or alone. We have plenty of food here. We have uh, ways to cook it with the furnaces, and we have uh, so many different types of coffee as well. We have a place to pay for it. We've got a nice, well-lit, functional interior that I'm hoping that you guys have enjoyed. And that is that, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope that you guys have have enjoyed this tutorial if you have please do remember to hit that like button as it really helps me and the channel out so 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 much if you're new around here and you are building a city and you want to see what i'm going to be making next subscribe and click the little bell next to the subscription button that really helps it sends everything to your sub box you won't miss a video and also by the way if you do have a specific build that you want to see leave a suggestion down below in the comments as a matter of fact not only might you get featured at one of the start of these videos if i make you suggest but if you want to make anything and if you want to see something specific and you want to see me make it I might have already made it by the way 
then the best way to do that is leave a comment, let me know what you want to see. But if you do want to see all of my past builds and future builds and present, check out the card system, description below and the top of the comment section. I'm going to pin you the city builds tutorial playlist. If you're building a city, it's the place to be. I don't just build one kind of thing. Literally, just like in the background right now, you can see so many varieties of builds, whether that be a baseball field, Denny's, Krispy Kreme, Park, we have a convenience store, 7-Eleven, we have a hotel, GameStop, we have so many fast food restaurants, bakeries. We have so many different builds, ladies and gentlemen, on the channel. You literally, you could, it'll keep you building for days and days and days. That's all in the card system, the description below, and at the top of the comment section too. But, I think that's everything that I've got to say. Thank you so much, everybody, for keeping the series alive. Thank you so much for supporting the City Build series like you guys have. You are such a help. I love you all very, very much. I'm going to jump off the top of Denny's now. Goodbye!